Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 6, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the tools that I used yesterday uh, to uh, get uh, to the bottom of the Facebook outage was a looking class website. So today I wrote a quick uh, diary article about how to use these looking class websites. Essentially what they are is different network operators are uh, maintaining these sites and you can essentially sort of run commands on various uh, routers using these websites to interrogate the routing table to do things like a trace route and such essentially to look at what the routing table looks like from different viewpoints across the internet so wrote up a quick introduction how to use uh, these uh, sites now with the focus on bgp in this incident uh, some people were jokingly calling october now the bgp awareness a month i'm not really talking much about bgp here there are plenty of other uh, great resources that can probably explain it better uh, than i do so this uh, article really just focuses on how to use these looking class websites and I mean, got a little bit more detail from Facebook's engineering team about yesterday's outage. Apparently, what happened was that at the beginning, they were running some routine maintenance jobs, as uh, they're uh, calling it, on their internal backbone. So the network that uh, connects Facebook's systems worldwide. And apparently, that took down Facebook's internal backbone. Now, at that point, some systems still had access uh, to the internet. They just couldn't communicate with each other. And as part of their sort of failover, which is actually not that unusual, if systems are no longer able to reach certain other systems at the same organization, they're then withdrawing BGP routes to those systems because, well, they assume they're down and that, of course, will direct traffic away from those systems. But because none of the systems was reachable, all the BGP routes were withdrawn and that then caused uh, the large outage that we saw. That's consistent with what we have seen sort of externally here. Part of the duration of the outage was also due to just the time it takes uh, to start up a big network like this. Uh, you, of course, will get a flood of requests coming in. They also mention uh, power usage, uh, essentially by uh, shutting down the servers or no longer uh, having them answer requests. They actually reduced power usage uh, on the order of megawatts and adding removing uh, megawatts of load from the power grid has to be done uh, carefully and that sort of delayed then the ramp up of facebook's services somewhat for more details uh, see uh, this uh, post by the facebook engineering team let me have a critical vulnerability in Apache, a directory a traversal vulnerability that's currently being exploited. CVE 2021-41773. And this vulnerability is luckily only in one very specific version of Apache 2.4.49. Apache version 2.4.49 was released about two weeks ago, so it didn't make it yet into any uh, distributions and such. Not very widely used. Uh, yes, there appear to be about 100,000 instances exposed, uh, but given the large number of Apache web servers out there, uh, that's really a fairly small uh, percentage of them. So the nature of the problem is that in order to check for path traversal, of course, Apache has to look at if the URL contains any dots and slashes. And apparently they didn't check if the dot was URL encoded with percent %2e. And that's uh, the part they had to check here. So really very similar to what Microsoft did back in uh, 2000, 2001 with IIS uh, 5. In exploiting this vulnerability, an attacker could potentially access arbitrary files on the system that the web server has read access to. This could also extend to, for example, CGI bin scripts that an attacker would be able to retrieve without having them actually being parsed. So the attacker would be able to get the source code. Doesn't look like this could lead to code execution like what happened with IS and then led to the code red and uh, NIMDA worms. 
So double check if you're running 2449. If not, then you're lucky and uh, move on. Well, on Microsoft today released uh, Windows 11 and Windows Server 2022. It also published a quick blog post with some security guidance and Jason Fossen, our Windows uh, instructor, uh, did earlier a link uh, to Microsoft guidance on hardening uh, Windows 11 and uh, Server 2022. So I'll uh, link to those resources in case uh, you want to get started deploying uh, these new operating systems. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.